Good evening and welcome to tonight's Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game. The doubleheader tonight as we start 2020 features the Tushka Tigers and the Silo Rebels. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams alongside Jayla McWilliams, my silent partner in the broadcast booth tonight. We are pleased and privileged to get to bring you this doubleheader. The boys game will follow, and it is Tushka at Silo tonight. Our broadcast is brought to you by the Oil Can, Texoma Engraving, Hausner's, Texoma Financial Services, and Sales and Trails Family History. With starting lineups to you in just a moment, the Tushka Lady Tigers wearing the road black uniforms, green numerals, and letters. Silo is at home wearing the home white uniforms with the red numerals trimmed in blue. Tushka will control as we get this underway. Lady Tigers come in with a record of 7-4 and four as driving to the basket is Kalen Kindred. And Silo gets the rebound, and the Lady Rebels are 9-0. and oh. Two points quickly on the board by Cassidy Harmon. Starting lineup looks like this for Tushka. The Lady Tigers wearing number two. It is a junior, Kalen Kindred, as the pass is taken away quickly down the court. Kindred will almost get it back, but the Rebels will have it and then step on the line. Turnover for Silo. A junior wearing number four, Morgan Bess. A senior wearing number 10, Tenley Wainwright. A sophomore, number 23, Presley Hatcher. And a junior, number 24, Jalen Milam. The Tushka Lady Tigers, who turn it over themselves, are coached by Lori Ford. Silo, meanwhile, brings out the starting lineup with a freshman wearing number zero, Brady Harmon. A freshman, number one, Tiani Ellison. A senior, number 20, Tyranny McCann. A junior, number 30, Cassidy Harmon. And a junior, number 10, Matty Busby. The Silo Lady Rebels, coached by Ty Harmon, 9-0 and on the year. Tigers looking at a 2-3 zone defense as McCann drives in. Shot won't fall. And Lady Tigers get the board and quickly turn it right back over. So Silo with another opportunity at home. First game of the new year for both these teams. I always talk about it being a cool mid-December night or a cool early January night as the Lady Rebels return the favor themselves and turn it right back over. It's cool tonight here in West Bryan County. Not too cold. I think that is in store for us this weekend. 10 second clock threatening to wind down as Tushka finally crosses the half court line. Silo looking to man defense, and McCann stepped on the line as she stole the ball. Tushka again 7-4 and four on the year, having won its last two games to end December, defeating Stringtown and on the road at Wapanucka. Turnover as Wainwright couldn't control it. Here comes a 4-on-3. McCann double teamed, will kick it outside. Tushka zone collapsing, not wanting to give Ellison much room on the inside. Driving left baseline is Busby. And Maddie Busby with her first two. Silo extends its lead to four now. Defense there for the Rebels, and Kindred could not get it to go. Drove inside, lost control of it. Lots of white jerseys in the lane there. It's meant lots of black jerseys open on the outside. Our first quarter tonight is brought to you by the Oil Can in Calera. New business in Calera, as you see, they're established in 2019. Three-pointer won't go. Ellison with the putback. That goes in. Tiani Ellison with her first two of the night. The Oil Can located at 10 West Wilson in Calera. Right there on the service road. As you're traveling southbound on Highway 6975, stop by and see Scotty and his crew. They'll get you take care, taken care of, oil change and more. That's the oil can in Calera. Definitely want to promote our county businesses 
And specifically, I want to give a shout-out to those businesses in Calera as the construction on 6975 has gotten underway. Last night in the middle of the night, Monday night into Tuesday morning, ODOT had slowed things down to just one lane, and Kindred will not find the lane herself. In fact, she will pick up the offensive foul, her first foul of the night, first foul for anyone tonight. Really quickly, 69-75 shut down at just one lane for a period of time. So it's going to be maybe a little challenging to get through Calera over the next two or three years. Let's be sure and support all of our county businesses here in Bryan County. Turnaround jumper, no good for McCann. Tipped around and saved, but saved to Tushka as Harmon could not find another white jersey to tip that ball to. So Tushka trailing by six now, needing some offense, driving the lane, shot won't fall. However... It's going to be enough, though, to send Wainwright to the line. Tinley Wainwright will be shooting two. That foul charge to Maddie Busby. Her first. First free throw attempt, no good. And Tushka struggling a little bit here for Coach Ford. And lots of frustration on the offensive end for the Lady Tigers. Need a defensive stop now here, see if they can slow down what the Rebels are doing. Busby driving. Rebound by Ellison. That one stripped away. You talk about taking that rebound and going straight back up with it. When you bring the ball down low, it gives the defense an opportunity, even with a height advantage, the defense the opportunity to get in there and knock it away. And that's what happened to Ellison right then. So Tushka will give it right back. Ellison got a hand on that, finally taken away by Harmon. She's going to drive in, stop, jumper from 12 feet. Good. Cassidy Harmon now with four points on the night. Pretty good silo crowd here this evening at home. Passes inside, shot no good from close range as Milam can't make that fall. And Silo's continuing to pitch the shutout. Of course, that's a definitely a welcome term here. Is that one nearly stolen? Gotten back by Busby. Shot no good. We have a foul underneath. And this one's going to go against Ellison. Or excuse me, Busby. And for Busby, that's foul number two. Of course, Lady Rebels picked up the state championship in fast pitch softball this year. A number of players on that softball team. Picking up the round ball here and continuing to play through the athletic year. Well, Busby goes out now, and sophomore Shaylin Midgley will come in. First substitute of the night for either of these teams. Driving in and putting that one off the glass is Wainwright. Tenley Wainwright at the two-minute, well, just inside the three-minute mark, puts the Lady Tigers on the board for the first time. Ellison shot too strong. And ripping away the board is McCann. She'll take it in off the glass. Tyranny McCann in for her first two. And we have a travel right at half court. Nice job by Midgley to get in there and just set up shop at the midcourt line. Ellison will take a seat now as a sophomore Lexi McDonald comes in. Zone look on the inside. And McDonald, quick jumper from the left elbow. Good, Lexi McDonald. She has two. And it's a 10-point advantage now. Five Lady Rebels have put in baskets already this evening. Man defensive look now for Silo and Coach Harmon. It's worked so far this year. Lady Rebels 9-0 and stepping in the passing lane that time is Harmon. Harmon will take it down. Meets two black jerseys in the lane, and the ball is taken away by Hatcher. Just got a hand in there and ripped that one away. Tushka needed that defensive stop. 
Long range jumper for Kindred won't fall. Well outside the arc. And Silo will reset now. Also in for Silo, by the way, is Alaria Bell, a sophomore. We have a timeout on the court. We'll keep it right here. Wanted to say thank you, by the way, again to the oil can, to Texoma Engraving, Hausner's Sales and Trails Family History, and Texoma Financial Services. Our first quarter is brought to you by the oil can. Again, located at West Wilson in Calera. It's right there on the service road. You can see as you drive by, just past, if you're heading south on 6975, just past Main Street, uh, you look over to your right on the west side of the road there, and there is the oil can again established 2019. Talked about the Tuscalady Tigers. Seven and four on the year. Silo, number four in the state, according to the OSSAA rankings. Nine and oh, that's going to get you there. Four wins in November, four in December, and I think the biggest wins of all probably came in the Bethel Tournament. Three wins to take the tournament championship, and all against 4A schools. Don't forget Silo, a 2A school. So the Lady Rebels positioning themselves. Skip pass as Harmon is open on the right wing. That one falls. Cassidy Harmon, six points tonight for the junior. Shaylin Midgley will pick up that personal foul. It's her first third team foul now for the Rebels who own a 12-point advantage here. And you look coming in, at least on paper, this looks to be a, a pretty good matchup. A couple of teams in Class 2A that are having good seasons so far. Lady Rebels definitely dominating at home so far here in the first quarter, which is winding down. And another turnover for Tushka means Silo gets another opportunity. Less than 30 seconds now. A little bit of motion now. Turnaround jumper by Bell. Rattles out. Put back. No good. But it'll be enough to send Lexi McDonald to the line to shoot two. Milam will pick up that foul. And for Jalen Milam, her first personal. McDonald's free throw is good. Second one as well. She had to hang on. Momentum was threatening to take her past the line. Less than 15 seconds now. Kindred long pass. And... It's not going to stay in bounds. Tried to avoid the presence of a defender coming in, trying to step in the passing lane. Hatcher couldn't keep it now. Ten seconds remain here in the opening quarter. Lady Rebels should get one more look. Harmon is open for three. White right wing. No. Long rebound. And time will expire. 16-2. Lady Rebels are on top in this one after the first period. It's the Bryan County Patriots spotlight game. Back here in Silo, Bryan County Patriots spotlight game, and Cassidy Harmon is leading the way for all scores. She has six points, five Lady Rebels with points on the board here tonight, including Tiani Ellison with two. Maddie Busby has two, Tierney McCann with two, and Lexi McDonald 
with four points tonight. Made a pair of free throws a little bit earlier, 16-2. Tinley Wainwright, the only Lady Tiger to have gotten on the board here in the first half so far. Our second quarter tonight is presented by Texoma Engraving. Tonight's spotlight game is the put back by Bell is good, count it. And she'll go to the line with another opportunity. Again, our spotlight game presented by the oil can, Texoma Engraving. Sales and Trails Family History, Texoma Financial Services, and Hausner's tonight. And Bell completes the three-point play. She has three tonight, and it's 19-2. Kindred bringing it down and losing it off her foot there. Laramie Reigns checked in for Tushka here in the second quarter. And Kindred for three. That one a little bit too strong. Rebound long. Tipped back in. That's a great job by Ashlyn Turner. Turner, another person to have checked in here in the second quarter, wearing number 33. She's a sophomore. McDonald jumper, jumper no good. And Bell did a pretty good job of not leaning in. Try to get that rebound. Silo, pair of players with the hands up, including Turner. And now three-pointer on the near side by Midgley. No good. And we have a foul. Hilaria Bell picks up the personal, trying to get the board. Second quarter presented tonight by Texoma Engraving. 35-09 West Arkansas in Durant. And I can tell you for sure, one of those things about Texoma Engraving, by the way, you're going to be greeted, you're going to be treated well. Lots of nice folks there. Kevin and Susan Chalk, owners, and wonderful folks inside. I get all of my embroidery work done there. They do engraving, they do embroidery work, they do t-shirts, screen printing, uh, trophies, you name it, and they're going to take care of you for all of those things. Bell's jumper is good. Alaria Bell with two more points. She has five now. It's 21-2. If you've never been to see what all that they can do out there at Texoma Engraving, you do need to stop by. And tell them Joey sent you. Would you do that? Definitely want to do that. 3509 West Arkansas in Durant. Timeout on the court. We're going to keep it right here for a moment. 603 remains here in the first half. And it really has been all silo. Now, you have to talk about Tushka's frustrations on the offensive end. There have been some looks inside and outside. It's not so much that the silo defense has locked down so much to not give a shot at all. There have been some shots to go up. There's nothing falling here. As the calendar is turned and, and uh, whatever offense that Tushka had in 2019 has definitely not translated over into 2020. Tushka put up 79 points in the season opener. 79-21 win at Boswell. On the road again, one at Rattan, 37-22, or do you have to say Rattan? I think I want to be right about that. And Tushka won his first four games. An overtime win against Caney. A big win there at home. It was the home opener. And then Colbert defeated the Lady Leopards 49-33. And since that time, it's been a different story. Three and four since then as we have another turnover. Traveling violation there. Hatcher tried to steal it and then just kept the momentum going. I did mention that Tushka had won its previous or its last two games, Stringtown and Wapanucka, but putting points on the board obviously at a, at a much higher clip than this. Worst loss of the season for Tushka so far as we have a near line shift here for Silo. Many of the starters coming back in. Bell stays on the court. 
56-18 as Tushka lost to Hartzorn, the number four team in Class 2A. Pass inside. Good look, and that's going to send Tushka to the line. Laramie Reigns will go to shoot two. Tiani Ellison picked up the foul. And that is her first, Silo's fifth team foul. Reigns can't get the first free throw to fall. She'll get one more opportunity. And this really has been indicative of Tushka's night all night long. 0 for 4 from the free throw line. One field goal made the entire night. And Silo will get an opportunity now to go to the free throw line. Reigns picks up the foul. It's her first. And Busby continues the hot shooting for Silo. Lady Rebels now 4 for 4 from the free throw line on the night. Make it 5 for 5. Well, and then there's your difference right there. One team 5 for 5 from the free throw line. The other team 0 for 4. And everything else just pretty much lines up with that as we have an unforced error now. And Wayne Wright, the only Lady Tiger to have scored tonight, can't control the ball and lets it go right there in front of her bench. Coach Ford and team looking on. It's a helpless feeling right now as Wainwright steps in the passing lane. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Will she have a cutter? No, she slows down. Kindred thinks about shooting from well outside the arc. As she drives in, that one's blocked. McCann gets a hand on it and another opportunity by the wayside for the Tigers. And we talked about, well, the defense may not have locked down. That's definitely locked down defense there. McCann asking for it back as Ellison will dribble it off her foot. Lady Tigers have scored in the 60s twice this year and the 70s once. They may not make it into double digits before halftime here. Wainwright. Tina Wainwright with her second basket and stops what's been a very, very long Tushka scoring drought. McCann outside the arc. Dribbles in, dribbles that off her foot. Uh, two or three players lose it off the shin and We'll have a tie ball. Harmon will step in. Brady Harmon steps in. The possession arrow favors Tushka. Milan checking back in and just reaching in, taking that away for Silo is Busby. She takes it all the way to the basket herself. The steal and the hoop. And another turnover for Tushka. Well, Maddie Busby with four points tonight. Six Silo Lady Rebels have scored. And it's been now the defense stepping up. Not even allowing shots. Ellison drives in. Count it! And she'll go to the line. Deanna, El Deanna Ellison looking to pick up the conventional three-point play. It's happened once already tonight. Reigns picks up her second personal. First free throw missed. McCann there. Johnny on the spot. Gets the board. Nobody to block her out. She puts it off the glass and in. Tyranny McCann has four. I suppose in that case it's Tyranny on the spot. Lady Rebels again seeing... Lots of success athletically this year. And a program that is known for athletic success. We can talk about silo baseball for the remainder of the broadcast and probably not run out of material. It was the softball team picking up the state championship this fall. And the basketball team, the girls' basketball team, making a statement here right now saying, I'd like to make a run to... State tournament in basketball as well. Reigns kicks out to the corner. Milam is over there. Mm -hmm. 
Man-to-man -man defense for Silo. Really coming out high. And up 25 here in the first half. Not backing down at all. Three-pointer in the right corner. Good. Count that one. Kalem Kindred for three. Lady Tigers needed that so badly. Pump fake, driving in, Busby, count it, Maddie Busby with two more. Kindred coming across, McCann. I heard someone yell Wolf, but it was not quickly enough. Tyranny McCann knocking that one out. Tuska will see. A junior, Mackenzie Huffman, check in for the first time tonight. McDonald checking in now for Silo. Kindred again, up and over McCann that time. And Caitlin Kindred, looks like she might be getting something going here as the second quarter is winding down. 31-9, McCann, the cutter. Ellison can't get the shot to fall. And a rebound picked up by Milam. Reigns. Not as tall as what that pass would require her to be. That's the two-minute mark here in the first half. Harmon, jumper right baseline, no good. Put back by McCann. It is Tyranny on the spot, and she is there. Once again, she has six points tonight, too. Right place, right time. That time... Not so much. She'll pick up the foul near midcourt, but real eye for where the rebound is going to come down. And to be there, somebody for Tushka is going to need to block her out. Tinley Wayne right now will go to the line to shoot. And the front of a one and one doesn't fall. Long rebound right to McDonald. She picks up her dribble, finds McCann now. Drive in, looking there, stopping. Jumper by Harmon, no good. And Ellison undercut. And the pain, however, is going to go to the other player there, and that is unfortunate. And you could see even as she was blocking out, trying to find Ellison to block out that that was going to hurt the back there of Jalen Milam. Ford will check her out. And Jalen Milam is going to get up under her own power. And we don't have replay capability. I don't think we would replay that anyway. However, uh, you have a player coming down and, and landing on your back just the wrong way. It's going to cause a lot of pain. Very nice to see Milam get up and be able to walk to the bench on her own power. So we pick back up here. Silo with the ball. Is turnaround jumper by McDonald. No good. McCann there tries to get the board, slung it away. It's going to wind up bringing a foul on Turner. And that will send Tushka to the line with another one and one opportunity. Said a little earlier, it might not make it to double figures before half. 
And they still may not. Wayne White's free throw, no good. Pass inside, too high for McCann. Turns around, kicks it right back out. The offense resets, sort of. Knocked away by Wainwright, stays with Silo. 64 ticks left here in the first half. All Silo tonight. McCann, right elbow, bounce pass inside, finds Bell, and that one's thrown away. Defense got there, didn't give Bell a good look. So Tushkin now with another opportunity before the intermission. Wainwright driving all the way in, up and off the glass, and good. Teenley Wainwright. She has six now tonight. And she puts her team in double-figure scoring here before the intermission. And go to the break with at least something positive to talk about. McCann, turn around. The pump fake gets her own board, falls away. That one, nice block by Tushka. Another opportunity, Kindred. Driving in. Count it, and she'll go to the line. And Kaylin Kindred, and now you start to see at least a little bit of why this Tushka team was 7-4 and four coming in. For the first 14 minutes of this game, though, it was really it was tough to see. Free throw falls. Finally getting some free throws to fall as well here in the first half. It's 33-14. Rebels, I thought, might hold it for the last shot on the previous set. This time it looks like they will. Let me give Tushka another opportunity. Harmon drives in around two defenders up and over. No good. Put back by Bell. No good. Can't grab the board. McCann does, but not until after the buzzer has sounded. And we go to the half with Silo on top, 33-14. Tonight's Bryan County Patriots Spotlight Game is presented by the Oil Can, by Hausner's, by Gallipot Pharmacy, by Texoma Engraving, by Sales and Trails Family History, and by Texoma Financial Services. We'll be back in a moment here.
back here in silo. Got to see the cheerleaders perform a little bit earlier, as well as Coach Mike Matheny recognized. If you watched closely during halftime, Coach Matheny inducted into another Hall of Fame. The American Baseball Coaches Hall of Fame this past weekend and what an honor the all-time winning coach in division two history former southeastern coach as wainwright steps in maybe a good halftime talk by coach ford wainwright with the steal and the basket tenley wainwright has two and tushka back to within 17 now 33 14 was the score at the break was Maddie Busby to lead all scorers. She had eight points. Tierney McCann turned around. Pass. We'll call it a pass. And Bell tried to kick it right back outside. It was knocked out of bounds. It will stay on the silo Lady Rebel end. Our Bryant County Patriots spotlight game presented tonight by the Oil Can, as well as Texoma Engraving, Gallipot Pharmacy, Hausner's Texoma Financial Services, and Sales and Trails Family History. Maddie Busby into double figures on the night. She has ten. First basket of the second half for the Lady Rebels. Just to close the book on the Coach Mike Matheny conversation there, talked about him being the all-time leader in Division II history in wins. He was a part of the Southeastern baseball program in some capacity as a player, coach, assistant coach, something like that for more than half a century. And Busby steps in with a steal, one-on-one. -on -one. She'll go up and over Wainwright, and Wainwright does not get position. She leans in. She'll pick up the foul, personal on her, and Busby will go to the line. Try for the and-one opportunity. Free throw is good. Three for three from the line tonight is Maddie Busby. The junior leading the way now for the Rebels. Contact there, no call. Pass inside, it's round one. Second one, not so much. Nice job by Busby to go up and get the block as well. She's filling up the stat sheet. McCann finds a cutter. Shot, no good by Ellison. Rebound and saved twice. It will stay on the silo end. Tipped away by Tushka. Busby is there, of course. And she'll allow her team to reset. On the court right now, pass inside to Tyranny McCann. Turnaround jumper is good. Tyranny McCann, as well as Maddie Busby, Tiani Ellison, Brady Harmon, and Cassidy Harmon, starting five back out for Silo. Looks to be the same for Tushka as the starters are back out there. Kaylin Kindred, along with Morgan Bess, Tinley Wainwright, Presley Hatcher, and Jalen, no, Milam is still out. That's Laramie Reigns out there. And Harmon gets a hand out, rips that one away. Two on three. She'll stop and jump. No good. McCann tries to pull that one in. Can't do it. She stepped on the line in the meantime. 40 to 16 now as Silo is on top. McCann gets a hand on that and will stay with Tushka. And this full court pressure now. It's a man defense 100% of the court. High pass, Ellison is there. 2 on 1, Ellison alone to the glass. Left handed layup goes. Tiani Ellison now with six. Hatcher trying to pump fake, get around the defense, can't do it. Another steal. Harmon this time. Cassidy Harmon comes away. Long pass down the court. Busby stops. Now she'll drive right hand on the left-hand side. Up and in. Count it. She'll go to the line. And Reigns now has picked up her third personal. Tushka bench not going very deep tonight as Maddie Busby gets another and one. And another steal. 
She'll throw it outside to Harmon. Won't be selfish. Spread the wealth. Oh, no. Open for three. Left side, no good. Grab another board. Jumper in the lane. That one's a little short. Ellison put back. No good. Can't grab a third opportunity. Keanu Ellison, by the way, with six points tonight. Maddie Busby, the game high, 16. Ellison tips that right to Busby. Two on one. Busby, pump fake off the glass, no good. Put back is. And those teammates have gone back and forth tonight. Ellison, a freshman, by the way, don't forget that. Another steal for Silo. This time it's Brady Harmon. Slows down, finds Cassidy. Driving left baseline. That one blocked with the foul. And a little bit of frustration there maybe for Wayne Wright. Team trying to claw its way back into this one at 14 points at the half. Just 14 points at the half. And now just a field goal here in the second half. Cassidy Harmon had six points in the first quarter. And she hasn't scored since then prior to that made free throw. Count them both. Inbound to no one. We talk about Southeastern and, of course, our Bryan County schools doing well. Southeastern, both women's and men's basketball teams doing pretty well this season. Nice look by McCann. Finds Ellison alone. And Ellison now has broken the double-digit mark. Great assist by Tierney McCann to find her. Wainwright driving the other way. Goes strong to the basket. Shot won't fall. And it'll go back to Silo. The Savage Storm women's basketball team leading the Great American Conference right now. 5-1 and one record. The men's team in second place in the standings at 4-2. and two. Kevin Buckingham putting on a show for anyone to watch. They're at home on Thursday night and at home on Saturday is a foul for Wainwright. And she's trying to get her share of fouls before this one's over with. That'll be number three. It's going to send Ellison to the line to shoot two. By the way, the flagship show of MidwestSports.net's YouTube channel, Midwest Sports Saturday, will be at Bloomer Sullivan Arena this Saturday, January 11th. It'll be Southern Arkansas in town to take on Southeastern. Well, Busby gets a well-deserved breather, as does McCann and Brady Harmon, Ellison on the line still. Second free throw, good. Best will now be on the free throw line for Tushka. And not a lot of prep time there on the free throw line for Bess. As the junior will just grab it and fire. Second one falls for her. She has her first point tonight. It's been a struggle from the free throw line for the Tigers. Two for seven. Skip pass nearly stolen. Harmon kicks it back out. And she'll get it back outside the arc. They'll reset this play. Half court looks been pretty good tonight for Silo, although the Lady Rebels have been able to get a, quite a few points in transition as well. And that one tipped around, and McDonald can't control it, so Tushka will bring it back.
Talk about silo and Lady Rebels will next be in tournament play. Sanctioned tournament week this week throughout the state of Oklahoma. Kindred's three is good. Kaylin Kindred with her second three-pointer of the night. And well, if you want to count the conventional three-point play, the and one, she has three of those. It's 52-20. Silo will be in Kingston on Thursday, January 9th, taking on another team from Atoka County. Turnaround jumper for Bell won't go. It's Silo and Atoka girls at 420 on Thursday. Loser of that game will play at Friday at 140. Winner will play Friday at 420. The Kingston New Year's Classic. That is a fun event to watch. It's a fun event to go to. And if you have the opportunity, I would encourage you as nice block that time by Turner. I encourage you buy the ticket that it takes to get to go to the hospitality room. Trust me, you will not regret that decision. Raise some money for Kingston, and again, you won't regret it. So with Silo going to the Kingston New Year's Classic on Thursday, you look back at the Lady Rebels over the course of the season now, 9-0 coming in well on their way right now to making it 10-0 as the free throw will fall for Kaylin Kindred. Her second make tonight, make it three for her. Gets her team close to shooting 50% from the line on the night. 52 points on the board. Well, that's a pretty consistent number for Silo throughout the entire season. McDonald, jumper no good. Put back, she'll go to the line to shoot two. Five of the nine wins, Silo scored in the 50s. Had a couple of wins scoring into the 60s, 68-20 to open the season against Rock Creek right here. And McDonald's first free throw is good. Lexi McDonald now three for three from the free throw line. At Calera, 56-25, and another 60-point game. As Silo defeated Wright City at home, 65-23. 54 points on the board here as the third quarter is winding down. Wainwright loses control, and Turner picks it up, kicks it away, and she'll get it back. 20 seconds on the clock now. Left wing three, good! Count it! Shayla Midgley! Her first field goal tonight is from long range, 57-22. 10 seconds left here in the third quarter. Kindred is not going to keep it. Give it over to Bess. Wainwright stops running jumper, too strong McCann with another rebound. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. Eight minutes left to play here in Silo. The first game of two tonight, Ryan County Patriots Spotlight Games. And the Lady Rebels in control here. Spotlight Games tonight presented by Gallopot Pharmacy, Hausner's, The Oil Can, Texoma Financial Services, Sales and Trails Family History, and... Texoma Engraving. Fourth quarter set to begin here in Silo and get some new names to you as this 
fourth quarter goes along. For Tushka right now, it's a junior, Trina White, checking in, wearing number 20. Silo keeps its same lineup out for a moment. Kindred driving in, won't get that basket to fall. White kicks out. 18-footer will rattle in for Presley Hatcher, maybe about 16 feet. Count it anyway, Hatcher's first basket tonight. Maddie Busby with the game-high 16 points. And Laria Bell. And for two more, she has seven. A couple of players in double figures tonight. Tiani Ellison with 11 for Silo. And Tierney McCann, eight. We said Bell with seven. Casty Harmon with eight. We'll see if some of those players come back in. Busby is there for another rebound. Busby 2-1-1. Fakes the pass, goes in off the left side. Count it for Maddie Busby. And she has 18 on the night. 61-24, Silo. It's going to pick up its 10th win of the season. Kindred's three-pointer no good. Nice block out by Turner. And they have a foul on the rebound. It's going to go against White. So Silo will bring this one in. Best checks out as Wainwright comes back in. Just a little update from Tushka's side as Jalen Milam injured early on back in the second quarter. And she's on the bench and she stands up with her team and she seems to be doing okay. Shaylin Midgley with another Long-range shot. She has a pair of three-pointers tonight, and she has six. Silo's lead is now 40. Back to 37, though, is Kaylin Kindred with another three-pointer of her own. And Kindred now with 16 points tonight. Three three-pointers and an and one. Bell. And the little move down low. The pump fake, spin around, can't get the shot to fall. It was just a little bit of a short shot there. And so Elyria Bell stays with eight points as Wayne White drives in. And really that was something you thought Tushka might do a little bit more of. Saw some success near the end of the first half, going aggressively to the basket. It didn't really translate into the third quarter. Midgley gets the board. They have a timeout on the court, actually. Silo calls timeout right now. We'll see Tierney McCann come back into the ballgame. But no, the Lady Tigers really didn't pick up where they left off in the first half, and Silo just came back out of the break on fire. A third quarter advantage of 24 to 8. say too many things too soon, although at this point you expect Silo to pick up its 10th victory of the season and probably is going to garner its highest scoring output of the year heading into the Kingston New Year's Classic. By the way, Tushka hosting its own tournament, the Ameristate Tournament there in Tushka. That gets underway on Thursday. Shot too strong. McDonald put back. No good. She'll go to the line. Fouled by Hatcher underneath. And first free throw is no good. Laramie Reigns checks back in for Tushka. Second free throw, no good, but the putback is there. Matty Busby now with 20 points on the night. Busby is four for four from the free throw line. And we don't have a track of the steals tonight. She has plenty of them as well as a number of rebounds. Turnover by the Tigers. And Silo will see Hallie Jones, a senior, check in now as McDonald takes a seat. Also 
And more substitutions coming in for Silo now. Michaela Taylor, Hannah Jones, and Keeley Blakely checking in. For Tushka, Alexia Scarborough into the contest now, as well as Callie Madden. Talked about the Ameristate Invitational for Tushka. That gets underway on Thursday. And the Tigers will get the primetime spot on Thursday night. They should. They're the hosts. Taking on Boswell. Pass inside to Bell. It's good. Count it. Hilaria Bell with two more. 68-27. Winner of that Tushka-Boswell game on Thursday will get the winner of Antlers Stonewall. That'll be on Friday at 7. Wainwright drives hard to the basket, count it. Tenley Wainwright, and she's now in double figures on the evening with 10 points. Cut the deficit to, again, less than 40 points. Outside, three-pointer, Taylor, no good. Here comes Wainwright again. Pass ahead, three black jerseys down there. Kindred will step outside the arc, that one won't go. Don't forget that the boys game will also be broadcast here in the Bryan County Spotlight game, Bryan County Patriots Spotlight game, on MidwestSports.net's YouTube channel, the home of the Spotlight game. Appreciate our sponsors for tonight's broadcast as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, well, please let us know. Jumper good. Kelly Jones, the senior on the board tonight. Becomes the eighth Lady Rebel to score. In the corner, Kelly Madden, three-pointer no good, rebound Bell. Would you like to sponsor one of these games? Well, we'd like you to sponsor one of these games. And we have more on the way through this 2019-2020 athletic year. Big one coming up on Friday, January 17th, right before the Bryan County Tournament. Now we're going to be in Colbert for that one. Cato and Colbert, the doubleheader there. Three-pointer count it. Kaylin Kindred with another long-range basket. And she has 19 now on the night. Should be Two good games there from Colbert. Bell has that one blocked. Kindred will keep it. Drive past the defenders and miss the point-blank shot. Rebound taken by Jones. And she'll bring it up herself. Jones, jumper, right elbow, no good. Bell put back too strong. Silo, by the way, does have 70 points on the night as Lexi McDonald will check in for Bell. And that is the most points scored in a game this season. Also checking in for Tushka, Ruthie Goodson. Too strong for Madden. Pass stolen right back by Tushka. Scarborough. Driving in, left side, no good. Rebound McDonald. Passes ahead. There's Jones. Jones can't get that one to fall. McDonald gives over. The teammate is there. Hannah Jones in. And Hannah, the senior, with her first basket tonight. Madden thinks about the three-pointer in the corner and will kick it back out. Silo with 72 points on the night. Three-pointer. Callie Madden thought about it a couple of times, and there was a reason. She knew she could make it. 72-35. McDonald too strong. Less than a minute remaining. Silo 
Silo will move now to 10 and 0 on the year. Tushka will fall to 7 and 5. Madden thinks about it again. Now looks inside. That shot blocked. Madden nearly gets it back. And McDonald will walk it up the court. The crowd senses that the seconds are ticking away here. And McDonald's just going to dribble this one out. Ordinarily, probably a five-second call. Not going to get it here as the officials know where we are in the game. Final score, Silo, 72, Tushka, 35. Again, Lady Rebels move to 10-0 on the year. Maddie Busby with a game-high 20 points. Tiani Ellison with 11. Alaria Bell with 9-8 for Tierney McCann and for Cassidy Huffman. Shaylin Midgley with three, or excuse me, with six points tonight. Lexi McDonald with six as well. Two points apiece for Hallie Jones and for Hannah Jones. For Tushka with the 32, 35 points on the board, had Kaylin Kindred lead the way with 19 points, a team high. Tinley Wainwright also in double figures with 10. Callie Madden had three. Presley Hatcher had two. And Morgan Bess with one. Again, final score here is 72-35. Silo moves to 10 and 0. I want to say thanks to our sponsors tonight, to Gallipot Pharmacy, to Texoma Engraving, to Sales and Trails Family History, to Hausner's, to Texoma Financial Services, and to the Oil Can. Thank you for being sponsors of tonight's Bryan County Patriot Spotlight Games. For Jayla McWilliams, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching. God bless you. Have a great night.